Hello everybody, what's going on and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. Today we begin the month of January, which means the transfer window is now open. We can go ahead and make any signings that we want to, to our Bournemouth team. We might even let a couple of players go as well. But remember, now we can also sign some players on pre-contracts. So I've gone ahead, I've shortlisted quite a few players that I'm going to show you right here before we get into game against West Ham because there's a number of big, big names on uh, on this list. And I've left out quite a few as well. David De Gea is not in my list, but he is actually, uh, his contract does expire, I believe. So you can actually go ahead and sign him. Um, but as you can see, as I'm scrolling through this list in a second here, I'm going to go downwards. Not all the players have expiring contracts. Some of them are just in there because maybe I want to bring them in. Of course, this year, you can actually bring in all the players with the way that dynamic potential works. So they won't uh, go down in overalls as quickly as they used to do. So yeah, that's why I'm looking at some of the older players in this list. I even looked at bringing in Ibrahimovic, but unfortunately he's retiring at the end of the season, so we can't make that happen. So goalkeepers wise, neither one have an expiring contract. They're just in there because I might want to bring them in. But we first get to our first player, which is Nicholas Nkulu. I'm not going to go through everybody, but you can kind of see as I'm scrolling down who do have them. Now, the issue here is, right, if I go ahead and sign any players I want on pre-contracts, realism of the series goes down because if I'm bringing in Luka Modric to Bournemouth, let's say next season, then realistically that probably would not happen. So we have to take that into consideration. But the way the game is this year, is realism really something we want to go for? Now, it would be very cool to see Edison Cavani playing in a Bournemouth shirt next season. And he is one of the players that I kind of maybe want to bring in. But I'm going to leave it up to you guys. What would you prefer to see? Do you want us to bring in pre-contract signings that are more realistic? The likes maybe of uh, of Matic, for example, whose contract expires at Manchester United and would actually potentially want another go in the Premier League with somebody else like us here at Bournemouth. Or do we just go all out and bring in anybody that we want on a pre-contract? The likes of Alexandro, the likes of um, Modric, the likes of Cavani... These type of players, what what do we think? Should we just stay with the fact of realism? Maybe only bringing in like, you know, lesser rated players on pre-contracts or should we just go all out? So I'm going to give it up to you guys. The top right hand side of the video, there'll be a little eye button. Pre-contracts, do I go for realism and just bring in players that have sort of similar overalls to the players that we already have here? Uh, the likes of Nkulu and Matic or do we just go for it and bring in anybody that we want? So... They're the options. I know it'll divide opinion. Some people don't like pre-contracts. Other people say they're a great addition. It's entirely up to you guys, as I, after all, I'll do whatever you guys want me to do. I'll still be using pre-contracts, and obviously when we get through the series a bit further on, and we are one of the best teams in the world, I can then sign anybody I want in a pre-contract. But for now, realistically, would the likes of Cavani and that, that lot come to Bournemouth if, uh, if we weren't playing Champions League football? Probably not, but such is the way of FIFA. You get the opportunity to bring them in, so it's over to you to decide. Here we go then for our first game of today away at the London Stadium to take on West Ham. And you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, that is their team. Fabianski in goal, Cresswell, Diop, Coates and Bellerin at the back. Bellerin, of course, signed from Arsenal. Rice, Fornals and is it Rongia in the midfield? Alongside Felipe Anderson, Yarmolenko and Sebastian Aller up front. And of course for us, Botland, Lloyd Kelly starts at left-back, Ake, Cook and Stacey line up in the back four. Fraser, Phillips, Lewis Cook, David Brooks, Josh King and Wilson as our starting 11. Madison on the bench alongside the likes of Abraham. Um, so if we want to call upon those guys, we can. But without further ado, it's our first game of the day and I'm looking for three points straight away. And we are off then here at the London Stadium as Ryan Fraser's ball into the feet of Callum Wilson. Does well enough to keep hold of it. And he's actually found a nice ball out wide here to Lloyd Kelly as well. Kelly on the left-hand side looking for the cross towards Joshua King. Fabianski's come out and he's punched it. And now Brooks will send it back in. And Wilson, I think, he's offside. He is, and that's given. Uh, one player in particular from West Ham's team that I'm looking at is Rice because he's a player that I maybe thought about bringing in for us. So uh, we'll see how, how good a game he has here. Because if he does, it could be a player we try and bring in as Phillips has found Wilson. Wilson trying to get a shooting opportunity. We does just that! Callum Wilson has pulled one right out the top draw after only 10 or so minutes. West Ham behind at the London Stadium. And all you can do is hold your hands up and say, Callum Wilson, that is sublime. Because it really is. And look at this from Callum Wilson. He's just trying to get the shooting position. You can see Coates doesn't really pressure him. And that's maybe something that you have to say is not good enough in, uh, in, this, in, in, in this move here. But when he tries to pressure him eventually, Wilson's already picked his spot and he's found it. Not good enough from Coates. 
He's going to have a difficult afternoon against the pace of Wilson and, uh, and Joshua King up front. But from West Ham's perspective, that's not the start they were hoping for. And they would expect them to defend a lot better. Here is Rice for West Ham. Finds Yarmolenko inside towards Sebastian Alla. And what can he do with the ball? And that's a nice pass through to Yarmolenko. Kelly trying to get there. He's turned him here. Kelly still. There's the cross into the middle. And it's not a great defensive header away from Cook. Felipe Anderson shot. Jack Butland makes the save. West Ham's best chance of an equaliser so far. Not convincing defending at all, Byers, I'm going to be honest. And Anderson is denied by Jack Butland. But there's still a corner to be taken as Pablo Fornals will do it. And Butland comes out, punches it only as far as Rongier. Oh my goodness. For a second, I thought he'd found the top corner with that. It was, it was sweetly struck. But how close is he actually to finding the back of the net? That's the question. I mean, he's actually further away than I thought he was. But for a split second, that did actually worry me. Last minute until we go into half time here. And it's 1-0 at the moment. That ball over the top, though, to Felipe Anderson. He's going to work out. Jack Stacey, lovely defending. And there is the half time whistle then. So we lead at the break. West Ham had a chance to get themselves back into the game. It was saved well, though, by Jack Butland from Felipe Anderson. And then Joshua King had an effort, which maybe could have put us 2 in front, but unfortunately put it wide. At the moment, though, the game's still fairly open. So there is still an opportunity for West Ham to come back into this. And there's also an opportunity for us to take a two-goal advantage. So this could go anyway in the second half. Couple of changes for us then as Mark Dillon and Tammy Abraham come on. Off goes David Brooks and Ryan Fraser. It's been a difficult day for Fraser, actually, because he's had Bellerin defending against him. And uh, Bellerin's not short of pace. So we haven't really been able to get Fraser in behind. So the change for Dillon, it's going to be a tough game for him to come on into right now because... Of course, uh, Bellerin's not really giving anything to Fraser. He probably won't give too much away to Dylan either. That's a poor challenge, referee. And surely a book in here. It's so late. He might even get red carded here, Sebastian Alla. And he is going to get red carded. It's such a poor challenge on Calvin Phillips. It's a straight red for West Ham's big man up front. And their day goes from bad to worse here. That surely knocks out any potential equalising goal from them. They're down to 10 men. Will they bring on a, another striker here? I highly doubt it. Rongier looks like he's moved up front a little bit, but that's just a poor challenge. He didn't really need to go for it either. Maybe a bit of frustration. Here is now Joshua King. Finds the ball through to Tammy Abraham. Abraham trying to turn and get the shot away. Good defending in the end. I can't really believe what I've just seen. That's such a bad challenge. Now we'll be able to keep West Ham fairly quiet going forward. But as I say this, Antonio's picked up possession. Forced the ball back towards Coates. Fornells on the touch. Gets it towards Anderson. Back towards Pablo Fornells. And he can strike the ball. Fornells, I don't want to let him have the shot. And great defending from Steve Cook as we will now play our way out pretty poorly. But Abraham has actually done really well to come away with possession. Dylan now looking for the run of Callum Wilson. He's going to find him too. Wilson. Dylan's giving the run through. Lovely play. Mark Dylan back towards Callum Wilson to finish it off. And he's done just that. A really nice move to see out this game. And Callum Wilson has picked up his second goal of the day, assisted by Mark Dylan on the left hand side. You love to see an academy uh, player coming through and doing stuff like this. It starts with Wilson's back heel. He gets it back. And there's actually a case maybe that Abraham's put off the goalkeeper there. But honestly, it's a fantastic finish from Callum Wilson. West Ham United since going now down to 10 men. Really have no chance. They tried in the first half, but that hor horrific challenge, sorry, from um, Sebastian Aller has pretty much <laughs> given no chance to them in this one. 18 minutes to play, 2-0 Bournemouth. Dylan finds Wilson. Five or so minutes to play here. Lewis Cook in possession. He's going to play the easy ball towards Calvin Phillips. Phillips as uh, that ball has somehow made its way through to Wilson for the hat trick. Very, very fortunate. Joshua King puts it back in. Abraham attacks it. And Fabianski does pretty well, I will say. That was so lucky the way the ball bounced all the way through to Callum Wilson, who looked to place it in the corner again for his hat trick. And it didn't work out. Cheaply given away here by West Ham as Lewis Cook. Has the run of Joshua King. He's found him as well. King across for Wilson. Should have been. It should have been the hat-trick. Ah, oh, how has he not scored? How has he not scored? He hit it straight at Fabianski. Goal gaping. I mean, he's mishit it. That's why he hasn't scored. Slices the ball. It should have been as Dylan takes the corner, surprisingly. Um, wasn't a bad corner by any means, but how, how on earth Wilson hasn't got his hat-trick there. He'll be kicking himself because he really should have. He should have had a hat-trick. Here's Lewis Cook again. Dylan's still there for the pass and he's giving him it too. Dylan's cross goes deep. Fabianski's there and that should be it from the London Stadium. West Ham nil. 
Bournemouth 2. A very professional performance from us. The game was fairly even up until that red card. But we've seen the game through two goals from Callum Wilson as well to get us it. And actually, he seems to be climbing himself up the goal scoring charts a little bit as uh, Joshua King seems to be falling off slightly. But it's really good to see that Callum Wilson is finishing the way he is because after only three goals in the opening sort of 10 or so games, he's picked up a little bit now. 2-0 win. Let's see what the interview has in store. With two goals to secure a win, Wilson was the hero today. Should have had his hat-trick, as I said. Uh, let's say an uh, overall great performance. The entire team deserves credit. Uh, you won again. Do you think West Ham United played well? There's no stopping us. Not as well as us or the lads did it. The lads did it. Uh, all credit goes to the lads and their hard work. And then finally, coming into this one, there wasn't much between your side and West Ham. Did you have any doubts you come away with the win? Uh, we are far from perfect. AS Bournemouth, uh, AFC Bournemouth always wins. The question is by how much? Very cocky answer there, wasn't it? But now we have ourselves an FA Cup game in the third round against Stoke away from home. So this could be quite a tricky tie, this. But of course, you want to try and get some cup success this season. So having already been knocked out of the Carabao Cup, this is our realistically only chance now of getting... Well, in fact, it's our only chance of cup success because... We're not in any other cups, as Calvin Phillips is happy. I'm going to say I'm proud, to you, I'm proud of you. I said that the same time, didn't I, last time? Yep. Yeah, um, oh, here we go. So, part of me was thinking, are we going to receive a few offers for our players in this transfer window? And that is exactly the case, as Bayer Leverkusen want to take Callum Wilson off our hands for £24 million. There's absolutely no way that that is going to happen. I'm going to go in to negotiate with them but I'm going to say something crazy like 60 million. They're never going to match this, so I'll come back to you in a second. And it was an instant rejection from Bayer Leverkusen for that 60 million pound counter offer, so that's not going through. It would have to be a humongous offer for us to accept any deals to take Joshua King or uh, Callum Wilson away from the club. You know what I'm saying? We just won't. We, we're just not going to allow that to happen as we have some more players into the world-class section of this one. And I've actually got world class looking at it too, with uh, over 30 players to maybe get some of them in. Alexis Sanchez could be an interesting one because he's actually gone to Inter on loan, hasn't he? So uh, we'll see what happens. But nevertheless, it's time for our cup game against Stoke City. And we've gone with our second team for the game against Stoke. You can see it there. We've got Ramsdale in goal, Mulder, Simpson, Metham and Smith at the back. Mark Dillon starts on the left-hand side in the midfield with Philip Billing, Jefferson Lerma and Harry Wilson. Madison just in behind Dominic Solanke on the left is Stokes lineup. Um, I've switched around a couple of players, but ultimately that is probably their best team that they are going to put out. Here is Madison on the ball already. Solanke looking to get in behind. He was lethal, wasn't he, in the Carabao Cup run we had, however short that was. And here is Dominic Solanke on the turn. Easy passing towards Philip Billing. Got a score, surely, and he does. Stoke were caught out and you know what they actually started the move off we won possession back and I think it was actually Philip Billing who won it back as well to start that move off and he gets himself into the box and they're all over the place defensively I'm not going to lie though when you're in these positions in the form that we are in we should really be uh, we should really be taking the game to Stoke and winning it convincingly I know they are a championship team and they can cause a few problems but I still named a very good team here you know there's not a lot of backup players in this team. There are, there are players in this team who could be pushing for a start in our first 11. Madison, Billing, Lerma. So we have got a very good squad out here. So if we don't win this convincingly, I will be pretty disappointed in the way we are playing if we don't win it by 2-3-4-0. I'm going to be honest. Billing just takes that ball back, says thank you very much. Solanke will find Madison. Madison trying to go around Martins Indian. He's done that. Madison in the box. And there's number two for Bournemouth. 15 minutes in. And we are in cruise control in this one already. James Madison, so good in these areas. Just takes it past, I think it was Martins Indy with a fake shot. And when he's in that position, he doesn't miss these type of finishes, Madison. And there it is again. 2-0 Bournemouth, cruising. Here is Lerma, finds the ball over to Dan Juma. And what a pass it is as well as Dan Juma's now in for number three. And he's found it as well. You know what? Dan Juma's one of these players, right? That I'm not actually settled on right now, whether or not I want to keep hold of him. But every time he comes off the bench, he seems to, like, either score or go very close to scoring. And there's the third goal in the game. It's come from Dan Juma. He's finishing. If you actually put it into perspective and works out how many shots he has had for us, I bet you he's probably near 100% um, goal scoring ratio to shot ratio. That's kind of ridiculous, really, isn't it? He just seems to score every time he gets on the pitch. And there's number three. 
The introduction has worked for Dan Juma, but it's all about that pass over from Lerma. A really good pick out. And we've still got time as well to make this even worse for Stoke City. Seconds remain here in this one. And there is the full-time whistle. It's Bournemouth 3, Stoke City 0. It's a comfortable cup victory for us. It was professional. It was convincing. And you can't really ask for much more than that. A couple of really impressive displays out there as well. Mulder at left back tonight. We played him at right back in our last, I think, cup game. And he was getting rinsed. So it's much better to see him performing here. Um, at his more natural left back role. Dan Juma, of course, scoring again off the bench. But ultimately... We did the job here that we had to do and we're through to the FA Cup fourth round. Arsenal and Manchester United finished. Manchester United won, Arsenal nil. So Man United have got through in that one. And uh, as we ent enter our interview, congratulations on your resounding victory today. Did you expect this win against Stoke City? Uh, yeah, of course I did. Uh, all credit to the lads. I want to see the draw though for the fourth round because I feel like there's going to be some quite interesting ties in there. How pleased are you with today's win? Time to focus on the next match. And then finally, Woods was one of the best players in the opposition today. I hate that question because it's the same answer every time because they lost. So he wasn't one of the best players, was he? Um, but I don't think the draw will have been made as quickly as that. Got some, uh, some messages to go through. We're still a point behind Manchester United at the moment as well. And there's some training to do as well too. And one of those messages as well is in regards to Edison Cavani. He's been approached on a pre-contract deal by Valencia. So I haven't got time to leave it up to you. So what I'm going to do is... I think I'm going to offer him a contract because I'm not used. I don't think I've used Edison Cavani in a series before. Um, and then, worst case scenario, if I don't, if you guys tell me not to use him, I just won't use him next season in the team. But I really wanted to try out Edison Cavani. £180,000 a week is a lot of money. Um, it's not like I haven't got that, but we'll see. Because if you guys decide not to use him, he might just end up sitting on our bench. And then I can't really sell him either for money because that would be bad too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer him the contract unless he wants way too much. And then if you guys decide that you don't want to see us make signings like this and you want to keep it at a certain overall, I just won't use him next season when he joins the club. 105,000 with a goal bonus of 4 million. Absolutely not. I'll go to 120, which is still 25 grand less than what he's currently on. 120,000 pound a week. 125. I'm going to accept it. And like I said... If you guys decide you don't want me to use players like Edison Cavani um, through the pre-contracts, when he joins us next season, he just won't play and we won't sell him either because his value, or if we do sell him, I'll sell him for something like crazy low in terms of value because it seems a bit unfair for us to, if you guys decide that, sell him on for a massive profit. So Edison Cavani's joining the club next season, but um, for the moment, it doesn't mean he's going to be playing for us. Ahead of our Watford game, we've got a press conference. A great heated encounter last time you met Watford. What are your hopes for this match? When did we last play Watford and what was the score? I can't even remember. Uh, I'm only interested in winning. We will try to win again. Hopefully, Watford will try harder. Let's let's go a little bit, a little bit cocky. Um, I really hope Watford will put more of a fight. The lads are eager for a challenge. <laughs> I can't believe that. A top up table finish is looking more and more likely as you continue to exceed expectations. Do your team have what it takes? Same answer I said last time. I think we were here. And you put the game beyond doubts last time. Congratulations. Do you reckon that your rival Watford is concerned at all? Um, my lads performed admirably. Watford's morale is irrelevant. Concentrate less on the opponent. Watford's morale is irrelevant. It's a little concern of me. Uh, we will try to approach the match like any other with a maximum level of professionalism and confidence. And now we've said all that, it's time to play against them. Hopefully my cockiness will be backed up with a good performance here. Still a point behind Manchester United, but of course, we will try to win this one. I'm going to switch around their team if it needs doing, and I'll be back in a second. Now that I'm actually looking at this Watford team, um, if I remember rightly, didn't Pedro Leon score against us in that last game? And also there was an own goal from Kazawa. I don't know what to do because Pedro Leon did score, but if you look at the team, um, they've also got Saar out there. In fact, let's just throw Pedro Leon because I think he did score against us. Um, other than that, that is the team that they're going to go with. Unfortunately for them, they have an injury to Zagadu, so he will not start. And he might be a big, big miss at centre-back for them. But that's the team. On the left-hand side is ours. And we're going to go straight into this game at home at the Vitality Stadium. Um, this is probably going to be our final game of today. As uh, it's looking like we might get ourselves three wins from three if we can back up our cockiness in our pre-match press conference with a performance here. And here we go then for this one as Eric Lamella's already in. Ball through and Jack Botland 
already required as Delafeu nearly scores the opening goal for Watford. Oh my goodness me, it went through his legs and Botland made the save with uh, his left leg in the end. Tell you what, that was a big chance for Watford and we're only literally minutes into this one. So uh, let's, not, let's not allow them a goal early doors here as we are <laughs> calm with the ball. But I'm going to be honest, for a second I thought we'd lost it. David Brooks. Oh, we are getting pressured. What are we doing? I don't really know why I've started this badly here as Etienne Capu will turn. The core in towards the feet of Welbeck. Welbeck now will find Lamella. Lamella through towards Kazawa. Sends the ball in. We need to get it out. Phillips and Ake will come away with the ball. And uh, now maybe a bit more calm from us as we play our way out. Joshua King lets David Brooks continue his run. Hang on a second. Can we turn defence into attack? Yes, we can. Callum Wilson already in behind. Wilson! <laughs> We're 1-0 in front. And it's come from a counter-attacking move. If you give him this time in your box, there's one outcome. And that is the ball in the back of the net. Straight from Watford's pressure, we are 1-0 in front. I feel like, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I'm playing FIFA at the moment, very much counter-attacking based. Um, but it's working. I feel like we don't have much of the ball in any of the games that we play possession-wise, yet we are just so good on the counter-attack. And I'm loving life here at Bournemouth at the moment. Wilson scores, 1-0 in front. Watford's manager very frustrated because actually it came from their pressure. Here is Fraser driving again. He finds Callum Wilson. Wilson through to King. King in behind. Is the offside flag going to stay down? It does. And Foster makes the save anyway. I thought, I genuinely thought we were offside. I could have probably taken a better touch on the ball as well. King trying to get up to win the header. And it's cleared away by, I think, Holly Bass. As now it's come through for Lewis Cook to bring the ball down and find Ake. Ake towards Phillips. Phillips now in towards the feet of Joshua King. But he can't come away with the ball. Here is Brooks. Finds Stacey. Jack Stacey allowed to turn, and he's got a pass inside towards Calvin Phillips. Phillips now will find Lewis Cook. Cook turning two. David Brooks, maybe. No, he's through towards King instead. And again, he's not. He's onside. Joshua King's onside again. And he's put this one wide. Here is Wilson. Look at the space he's in. Callum Wilson as he's now in the, inside the penalty area. Wilson! And there's number two. It's so, so simple for Callum Wilson when he's in these positions. I will say Joshua King might have sort of dried up with the goals at the moment. But Callum Wilson hasn't, has he? It's Watford calamity at the back. You can see two players getting in the way of each other. Which allows Wilson so much space to run into. And with, uh, with that much time to think about the uh, position of his shot. It's past Foster. It's 2-0 Bournemouth. And surely it's us heading to another three points. Watford, they started off the game strongly. But nowhere near as good since then. Since going 1-0 down, they've not been able to put pressure on like they did to begin with. Eric Lamella will find his pass up here towards Kazawa. Kazawa trying to turn. David Brooks takes it off him, makes it look simple. Nearly gives away possession, but King will turn. Now finds Phillips. Look at the Ryan Fraser again. We need to try and get the pass off towards him. Phillips does that now. Here is Ryan Fraser. Turns, gets past Hollybass. Still allowed to continue here, Ryan Fraser. And still, pass one challenge. Oh, it's brilliant from Ryan Fraser as it's 3-0 Bournemouth. And Watford... Have to be careful that this doesn't get embarrassing. What a run, though, from Ryan Fraser. He's just so, so good. This challenge here gets nowhere near it. Says, see you later, mate. I'm finding this bottom corner. No chance for Foster. Unbelievable stuff from Ryan Fraser just before half time. Tried twice, and Kelly blocks both, but that's still an opportunity now for Watford. Etienne Capu's ball up towards Delafeu. Sends it off. Great block from Ake. And we actually haven't played our way out too well, though, because now we're under pressure again. Decore, Pedro Leon, Decore, Welbeck, Decore! Over the bar, and I think it might have taken a touch as well. It did off one of the players in the box there for us who blocks it. And now it's a corner for Pedro Leon to swing in towards the middle. King gets a touch on it. Ryan Fraser trying to work his way away. And look at this again from Ryan Fraser. Chance to again drive at Watford. Tried a bit of skills, didn't work out. David Brooks finds a fantastic pass towards Ryan Fraser. Again, we'll turn on the inside. Now King towards Wilson. King waits for Fraser to give him the run. He's giving him it too. Here is Fraser pulling it back for Wilson. Good save. Foster, he's bounced back out. There's Lewis Cook. And somehow we haven't found the fourth. Ben Foster with a good save. I've actually taken Steve Cook a long way up the field of play. I need to be careful. Foster makes the save from Wilson. It was a nice move again by us. But we just could not find the finish. Our first chance of this second half has, uh, has gone Unfortunately, to the wayside, we couldn't finish it off. And here's Penedrara now for Watford. 
probably butchered his name. I apologise. They've been much better in this second half, have the away side. But that's great work from Ke... Oh, no, no, no. De Feu. Pedro Leon. Back post. Jack Stacey. Botland's trying to come out. Saves the initial one. Ake has to win it. He doesn't. But it's for Steve Cook to clear it. Oh, I can't I get out. Penadara's going to get the shot and Botland will save it. Here is King. Wilson going to continue through. Joshua King sends him in. Wilson for the number three. A four, sorry. And he's going to get it. Is that the hat trick? Fraser's got one. Wilson, yeah, hat trick for Wilson. Get in. 4 0 Bournemouth. It's looking convincing. But to be honest with you, some mistakes that have crept into our game. Watford could have actually scored. Botland's made a couple of really good saves. Again, though, you allow Callum Wilson in that position, he's going to do that to you. 4 0 Bournemouth. The pace of those two guys up front, Joshua King and Callum Wilson, is just too much to handle for some teams. 30 seconds to play now of this one. I haven't even made a substitution because they're playing that well. And here then goes Penaranda through on goal. Changed the name of, uh, and how I've said it numerous times in this one. And it is going to be a Bournemouth, oh, sorry, a Watford consolation. 4 1. Penaranda has scored. Uh, again, I apologise if I'm getting that wrong. I've said his name like three different ways so far in this game. That's annoying because we could have defended this. Nice work from Watford though to get the chance and Butland's not going to make the save. He isn't going to get his clean sheet either. It's 4-1 though, so honestly I don't even care. Joshua King going to try and maybe hit one. I mean, that, that was actually a ball over the top. But anyway, uh, Wilson collects the match ball. Hat-trick hero. That's now, I think, his ninth of the season. Yeah, he's catching up. And Manchester United have just won again. They've beaten Norwich three goals to one. So uh, we will remain a point behind them. Why didn't we see, uh, see Lerma play? Why ask me this? I've done this before because I don't get it. Hattrick is something we rarely see nowadays. What's your take on Wilson's performance? Breathtaking. Got to be said. Um, and finally, you won again. Do you think Watford played well? There's no stopping us. And that gets the confidence up again. And at the moment, I actually want to see where Wilson is in the goal scoring charts because he could well be near the top of it. So let me quickly check that. I was actually wrong with the amount of goals that Wilson has got because he's actually on 12 now. So he's only three behind Kane and uh, King at the top of the table. Sigurdsson in there with 12 for Everton as well. Dwight Gale still in there, Lacazette, Belotti, Pukki. Um, but for the moment, two of our strikers in the top four, uh, four of this one. 27 goals between them so far this season, which is a tremendous feat. Wilson also in there as well with the top assists for the Premier League. Um, which is really good to see as well. But my friends, that is going to be where we end today's episode off. I'll quickly show you the table, the draw, and all of that good stuff. So here is the Premier League table at the moment. 22 league games have been played. Manchester United on 48 points. We are on 47. Winning 15, drawing two, and losing five of our 22 games. City in third. Brighton into fourth. Leicester fifth. Arsenal climbing the table up into sixth. Chelsea, Liverpool all falling off the wayside. Um... But down the bottom end of the table, Palace in there, Burnley, Norwich, Watford, who we've just played, are in there. West Ham getting close. So actually, look at the wins we've had today. West Ham and Watford, and they're both down the bottom end of the table. So games we should realistically be winning in that uh, factor. For the FA Cup, though, who have we pulled in the fourth round of this one? As the draw's been made, we have got Newcastle. So Premier League opposition, Walsall, Everton, Swansea, Wolves. Is there any really good ties? Oh my goodness me. Man United had to beat Arsenal in their third, our third round. And now they've drawn the other North London club, Spurs. That's, that's going to be another tough game for them. Spurs versus Manchester United. Elsewhere, is there any other really good games to look forward to? Not a lot, to be fair. But again, we're hopefully going to see one of the tougher teams get knocked out. Well, we will see one of the tough teams get knocked out. Spurs or Manchester United. Chelsea still in this. Liverpool in this as well. Looking at the teams left in it, I have a really good feeling about an FA, an FA Cup run this season. So, yeah, looking forward to it. But nevertheless, that's going to be it for today. If you've enjoyed it, a like would be greatly appreciated. As always, a massive, massive thank you for your support on the channel. Really appreciate that as well. If you are new around here and like what you see, hit that subscribe button down below to follow me on the channel. Do leave your votes at the top right-hand side of the video in regards to the pre-contract signings. I know we've got Cavani joining us next season. But worst case scenario, like I mentioned earlier, if you guys decide that you don't want us to bring in like big players on pre-contract signings, I just won't use him and effectively he'll just not be, you know, available or whatnot. Or maybe I will, maybe I'll only use him for like Champions League games or Europa League games if we get into it. Potentially that could be something we do. Um, but yeah, until the next time, massive thank you for watching and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Adios!